A number of metrics looking better than anticipated this morning, the revenue numbers, the volumes all coming in better, but you're expecting lower operating margins in the second half. I wonder if you could just give us the story then of your outlook. How do you see the outlook for Heineken right now? Very good. Good morning, uh, Anna. Thanks for, uh, for having me. Yeah, as you say, we had a very strong first half uh, with beer growth almost 10 percent, revenue growth 14 percent and operating profit doubling. And that doesn't happen that often. Uh, so great to, uh, to see it. Uh, and it was a broad based uh, bounce back of the business. We had 16, 17 percent growth in the Americas region, in the Africa, Middle East uh, region. And very importantly, Brent Heineken, our largest asset, growing 20 percent and double digit growth in over 50 markets. So very broad based and important swing back, strong results in the first half. And at the same time, as we have been since the outset of the pandemic, we are cautious on the outlook. It remains very volatile. Um, you can even see it from quarter by quarter. First quarter in Europe, we were down almost 10 percent. Second quarter, as the uh, on trade reopened, we are up 13 percent. And we do continue to see these kind of uh, swings up and down happening. Now, at the moment of particular concern is Southeast Asia. The impact of the pandemic last year was relatively benign. Now the impact is much higher. A case in point mm. being Vietnam, a very important uh, operating company for Heineken, uh, having a, uh, yeah, a, a serial uh, lockdown across the country, particularly in stronghold markets, which are very important to us, like Ho Chi Minh City and the Mekong uh, Delta. Okay. And with vaccination rates still being very low in Southeast Asia and Vietnam in particular, we do expect this uh, yeah, to remain volatile in the second half of the year and therefore some caution. OK, so that's the story around the second half and, and some of that coming through from Asia. Uh, and that's the revenue story, I suppose. From a cost perspective then, Dolph, you're flagging higher commodity costs this morning. Which of the commodities are you being hit by or look most uncertain? And, and how able are you to pass that on to your consumers? Yes, I, I think the commodity uh, price increases are uh, widely commented on. We are not unique in that sense. It's not one or another category. It's across the board from road transportation, ocean freight, uh, barley, aluminium. Across the board, we see, you know, that more inflation than we have seen probably at any time over the last uh, decade. Now, we are able, through our hedging policy, uh, to, to lock in lower pricing than what you see kind of top line in spot pricing, but still the impact will be uh, significant. Um, and it will mostly hit us uh, next year, but we already will see a first impact in the second half of this year. And that's on top of the relative high transactional effects that we are having this year, uh, as we flagged uh, late last year. Um, cost mitigation will be very important. This is an explicit priority under our Evergreen Transformation Program. We kicked off a large global reorganization. We already locked in about half the benefit with the second half to come in the second half of the year. And pricing, as you say, is and will be very important. Um, in that sense, we are encouraged by our performance here to date. Uh, pricing up over 5%. Um, we see almost 10 percent uh, revenue per hectolitre increases in the Americas region, in the Africa Middle East uh, region, particular strong uh, performance in that regard in, uh, in Brazil. Mm. So I'm confident in our ability to move fast on pricing if and when needed. It will be a very local for local uh, situation. But um, yeah, the question is to what extent we will be able to offset this commodity pricing as we continue to hedge towards the end of the year. Um, so for yeah, now, okay. we prefer to be cautious, to be yeah, assertive on this. OK, OK, so that's the commodity story. What about the European consumption uh, story then, Dolph? We've seen, of course, many parts of Europe reopening. We've seen bars reopening. How is that playing out for you? The, the, the football tournament, no doubt, had an impact. But on the other side of it, what does business look like? Yes. Um, as I said, uh, a big difference between the second and the first quarter. The business really coming back strongly in the second uh, quarter, 13 percent up. Where we're seeing the on-trade, of course, coming back as the, uh, the on-trade is reopened, but still with elevated uh, volumes in the off-trade. 
Uh, we think uh, that consumers found new locations for beer consumption in and near uh, their homes. Uh, on trade coming back, but still being below 2019 level. Even the exit race in June, when uh, most of the on trade was reopened in, in Europe, was still a high single digit below 19, but heading in the right direction. And of course, June, uh, we had the Euro 2020 tournament, as you mentioned, which really boosted further our, uh, our sales. It was just lovely and great to see people back in the stadiums, people back in the bars and restaurants and at home watching uh, this great tournament. Yeah, absolutely. It was a, a sight to see. Uh, let me ask you about some structural shifts that we're seeing around uh, beer consumption, Zolf, and what that means for Heineken. What can you tell us about the low and non-alcoholic portfolio, how that performs? Yeah. Uh, low and no elk has incredible momentum. If you look to Heineken 00, which is our low, uh, largest 00, 00 proposition, it grew another 40% in the first six months of the year. It's now available in 95 countries. We see a continued momentum building. Heineken was one of the first major companies to, to really invest in this area when we launched Heineken 00, 00 back in 2016-17. Uh, and we think it's still early days. We see European markets where zero zero beers are already over five to ten percent of the total beer market. Globally, it's still smaller than one percent. So we believe we're going to see, you know, this increasing over uh, over the years.